we have a magnificent sighting of an impala ram in his prime. He's just come out of the rut, or just going out of the rut now. He's all alone behind a black monkey thorn thicket. Now it's well that we take the time to enjoy these antelope on a day like today because of course things can be very quiet when it's blustery and cold like this. Look at his horns and look how they've been damaged over the course of the last few months while he's been fighting. You can see they're cracked and that keratin layer will replace and heal over the course of the winter time and then the summer until we get to the next rut. And I think he's actually in pretty good nick. He doesn't have that sort of shiner, that bruising around his eyes that many of the others do. I don't know if that means that he's particularly good at fighting or if he's just been beaten up a bit more than the others and so he hasn't been fighting for a while. But he's completely alone here, completely isolated, which is not common, as we all know. Looking, listening, smelling, all over the place. There he is, completely alone in the world. And that's probably because he's irritated everybody with his constant snorting and snarling and impala growling. He's very interested in us. And just look at the shape of his face if he'll stand still. I hope he'll remain still. He's just get looking slightly nervous now. The shape of his muzzle is interesting. I, we so seldom study them in this detail. He's got a sort of little moustache under his nose. You see that there? A little bit of white with some a black stripe on it. I've never noticed that before. The width to his nostrils there will double when he makes that snorting sound. So there's a sort of cavity in there, um, a chamber that allows the amplification, I think, of his snorts and his growls and sounds. And then I'm not sure that I've paid a huge amount of attention to those white stripes above his eyes before. And interestingly, those occur on many antelope species, including the waterbuck, including the kudu, and there's a lot of thought as to why they should be there and why they aren't. But the argument that it helps to reflect light into the eyes when they're in thick bush, I don't think is a bad one. I think that's probably quite a good argument. It's just difficult to see why else they would have them unless it's so that they can keep visual contact with each other when they are in thick bush and they can see where they're looking. So you can see at that distance, you can see in exactly the outline of his face from the little white patches. You can see his white milk moustache, his eyes, and his ears, and then the flicking of his tail. That's interesting. I, sus I wonder if it isn't much more communication than it is trying to reflect light into the eyes, because I'm not sure how, with white above the eyes, there would be any kind of reflection into them. This is a marvellous Impala sighting, actually. You can see he's all fluffed out because it's a little bit cold. So that hair is standing up on purpose. He's not in the best of shape, I wouldn't say. I'd say he's got quite a lot of mass still to gain after the rut. No, Brenda, they don't. And that's a really interesting one, especially this time of year. You say, do the horns grow back after they, if they break off during the rut? No, Brenda, they don't. They won't grow back. Um, if they break off their bone inside, so it's a little bit like losing a limb. So they will break off and that will be it, I'm afraid. And many impala, well not many, probably about 2% or so, lose or damage a horn during the rut and you see these strange unicorns running around the place. But look how on edge he is, see that? He's complete, especially as the wind starts to come up. Chris, you're wondering about those rings on the horns and whether they indicate anything perhaps like age. Um, they don't indicate anything to do with age, no. They will all have those almost from the beginning. 
It, well, um, I don't. Th I'm just trying to think why they form. I, they, I think they're just growth rings of the uh, of the keratin. I don't. You see, I don't know where actually where the keratin grows from. Whether it grows from out of the horn or on the base of the skull there, because that's a that's a keratin sheath which is over the bone and I'm not sure where it grows from so I don't know about those rings or why they're there. I think actually they're an adaptation that allows the impala's horns to sort of scrape against each other. It allows them to almost hook in to the other impala and then kind of drag them around a bit. Alrighty, our impala has gone behind a tree. We're not allowed to move from here because we don't have much signal. So we're going to hand you over to Tristan for an elephant update and we'll see what else we can find.